Have you ever thought about repurposing someone else's content to benefit your business? I know at first listen, this may sound like a really far out there idea, especially coming from someone who absolutely advocates creating your own awesome content inside of your business. I do, however, love bringing you real life examples of repurposing in action. And that is why today's episode number 293 of the Amplify Your Awesome podcast features an interview that is not mine. Let me take a step back and give you some context about this episode. I was recently invited to be a guest expert inside of someone's Facebook group. Kate Allison of Kate Allison Creative asked me to come speak to her authors and aspiring authors about this idea of content repurposing. Now, if you don't know Kate, she's awesome. You definitely should connect with her. And on today's show notes, I will link up all the places you can connect with her because she's someone you definitely want to have in your corner if you are looking to publish a book. Kate is a writing coach and editor, and she supports aspiring authors by helping them to believe in the power of their story and teaching them how to communicate it so that they can write and publish the book they've always dreamed of. Sounds awesome, right? So when she invited me to be a guest expert, I hadn't really thought about using that interview on this podcast, but then I thought, what the heck? I really want to show you all the different ways that you can use content repurposing in your business. So after the interview is done, I reached back out to Kate and asked her if it was okay for me to use the interview on the podcast for today. When she said yes, I was thrilled and I'm so excited to share with you Kate's interview of me from her Facebook group. I look forward to hearing more from you and getting your feedback on today's episode. Enjoy the show. Hello, hello. Kate here with Kate Allison Creative. I am so excited today to be here with Yong Pratt, also known as Dr. Content. So she helps people uh, create content for their business, and she shows you how to take one piece of of really strong content and turn it into bite-sized pieces of content that you can put everywhere so that you don't have to spend all of your time recreating your content. Now, if you are an author and you are writing your book, what she can do is she can help you pull out nuggets of wisdom from your book and turn that into your brand content. So Yang, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you're here today. Kate, I am thrilled to be here. This is one of my favorite topics. So I'm excited to share with your authors and your aspiring authors how to take the content that they're creating now and connect with more of the right people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. So can you give us a little bit of background about yourself, about your experience? Sure. So I am a 17-year performing arts studio owner turned the content doctor. And it's been a long and exciting road that's taken about 20 years to get here, which is which is so fun. I've been podcasting since 2013, uh, published my first book in 2016, working on book two now. And now it's my great privilege to speak with people who are out there creating awesomeness and then helping them take that awesomeness, elevate it, amplify it so that they can really get more of the right readers, more of the right listeners, more of the right consumers of their awesomeness. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yes. So one of the things that I do is I help people take the content that they're creating for their business and turn it into a book. So, you know, I I think it's interesting. I think that what you and I do, it really complements because you help them create that content. I help them turn it into a book. And so what I, what I want to know is how do you create, how do you create content that, that really resonates with your audience that stands out in all the noise that exists today? Yes. And there is a lot of noise for sure, right? Every day we are bombarded with tens of thousands of media messages. And at some point it gets to the point where we kind of feel like, oh, well, we're not going to put our content out today because I saw something I saw someone else doing that and uh, maybe their stuff looks a little better or that sounds really good, but it sounds like mine. So I'm not going to do it. So it's really about stepping back and saying, okay, we're going to get off comparison Island because that's the first thing when it comes to content that so many of us run into. And then the next thing is how do you infuse more of yourself, more of your quirkiness, more of your weirdness, more of your idiosyncrasies into 
every little piece of content that you put out because the more people see you and they get to know you as not just an author or a podcaster or video creator or what have you, the more they get to know you as a person, the more likely it is they're going to be part of your awesome tribe. That's, that's such a great point. And so one thing that I notice is that, you know, sometimes people are a little afraid to put themselves out there. They're like, well, what if people judge me? What if people don't yes. like me? How do you recommend people get started <laughs> if they're not sure how to put themselves into their content? Well, I'm so glad you asked this because this myself has been a journey that I've been on. And my biggest recommendation to everyone, no matter what kind of business you have or what kind of content you're creating at the end of the day, the very best way to connect with more of your dream audience is to do video. Now, I know for a lot of you watching the Pepper Creek Gang, there's no way. And trust me, for me to get here onto this video with you, I mean, it's been about a decade of me going out and joining things like Toastmasters, doing things that I'm really uncomfortable with, hiring coaches to help me be on video. But the thing with video is that it connects you to people in a way that not many other mediums can do because they can see you and there's someone on the other side of the video camera there's that automatic exchange of energy, which kind of elevates the whole experience, not only for you, but for your audience. So if I was to recommend one way to create content, to promote your book, to promote your business, it would be to do video. That's, that's such a great point, you know, and, and I find it interesting because, you know, obviously most of us here, you know, you're here because you want to write. But video can be key to really connecting with your audience. And so where do you find places? So someone can create videos. So if someone has a bunch of videos, then why would, why would they also need to write a book? This is another really good question. And, and, you know, when I wrote my first book, it was kind of sort of the same thing, right? The idea of taking something I had already created and turning it into something else. And in this day and age, that's really more about leveraging what you have. So the more places where you can put your awesome content, the more likely someone is going to come across your message. For instance, when I do video, I know that it's not going to just live on my Facebook page. It's going to be over on my website. It's going to go on YouTube, and I'm not a YouTuber by any means. However, people are searching for things on YouTube in a different way than they would search Facebook, right? So mm -hmm. it's really about leveraging that piece of content and being able to connect with your audience in different ways. Because my whole first book was about our gardener's theory of multiple intelligences, how each of us learns information in different ways. So... I love to consume audio content and video content. I love to read as well, but if I had to choose one of the three, it would almost always be audio or video because I can take them with me because they're portable. So when you're thinking about connecting, think about where your people are hanging out and give them the information they want in a way that they want to enjoy it, not the way you want to always create it, if that makes sense. Absolutely, yeah. And, and I love that you brought up uh, Howard Gardner's theory of, of multiple intelligences. Uh, some of you might not know this about me, but my background is in education. And so this was something that I studied as well. I used to be a music teacher, so I'm very familiar with, you know, the different types of intelligences. And I believe that, you know, there, there are more than just the ones that he originally created. And yes. I, I think it's, it's interesting that we can apply that in, in our business. So how have you found, how do you use that knowledge at, when you create your content? So now when I create content or help my clients plan out their content and really come up with a strategy, it's about getting the most bang for your buck. And what I mean by that is you wanna choose your path of, first of all, at least resistance. And choose the, you know, and I mean by that by saying less is more when it comes mm -hmm. to content, right? It's really easy to get into that trap or get onto that content creation hamster wheel where you're just creating content because you think you need more, you need more, you need more. When in reality, we need to flip the script a little bit and spend more time promoting our content and getting it in front of the right people versus creating. And I know for me, myself as a creator, that's tough. It took me a long time to understand because I love creating so much. But then at the end of the day, when we think about, okay, 
if I'm going to sit down and write a book, think about all the other people out there. You know, will, would your next door neighbor like to read a book? Or would they like to listen to audio? Would they like to see you on video? You know, there's so many ways now to slice and dice your content. And it's really important to do so because, as we talked about in the beginning, there's so much going through everyone's needs feed every day. So we need to give them little bites of wisdom, little nuggets that they can take with them and enjoy for the, throughout the day. And not just, you know, one two-hour webinar or, two, you know, a book that's going to take them, you know, possibly a couple days or a week or maybe if it's really chunky, you know, a month to read, right? We want to be able to give people little gold nuggets that they can take with them and share with others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that's so important that you mentioned that because while it, it can be helpful to have those, you know, those two hour webinars and that book because those really do position you as an expert, people aren't going to start by watching those or reading your book. People want to know who you are before they're going to buy your book. And even if they do pick up your book first thing, you know, they're going to read the first couple pages before they decide if they're going to buy it. And so I think it's important to connect with them, to meet them where they're at and to find. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so if you have the introduction of your book done, could you record even some audio that's one or two minutes, chunk those out and drip out one a day for two weeks? Right. Because not everyone that connects with you on Facebook, Instagram, or any social media channel is going to see every single post. So it feels as a creator that we're putting out too much information. But what I see from the clients that we work with is they're not putting out enough information in enough repetition that the people are just not simply seeing it at all. So think about how you can extract, take out those little quotes and we call them quote cards around here. Is there a tweetable that you can share? Mm. Something really small. Because mm. when people go to look for a book, you know, the first thing they're going to do is go look you up probably on Facebook right. or Instagram and see what else you have, right? They want to know more about you. So mm. if you're able to deliver them little, you know, action-packed, bite-sized nuggets that they can carry with them, and they like that because it's easy to consume, it's easy again for them to share, and that's part of this whole system, right, is that we wanna make our stuff easy to share. So if it's tiny, people are more likely to do that. Yes, yes, definitely. And so you also mentioned that, you know, a lot of us spend a lot of time creating content when what we should be doing is promoting <laughs> it. So what, what recommendation do you have? Like how much time should someone, like let's say I have block, say five hours a week for content, how much of that time should I spend creating and how much of that time should I spend promoting? Well, I think it's really just about the, the goal of your business. If you're an author and you're promoting a book, think about that. How much time does it take you to create a book versus mm -hmm. how, you know, take a look at that. Can you, can you quantify that? Some people can, some people, you know, I would recommend starting to record and track their time to sort of see how much time they're actually using to create and then spend way more time to promote that. And it really depends on, again, the goal of your business because every business is different, even though we have mm -hmm. similarities. I mean, if you have a launch of a book coming up, if you have a launch of a podcast, if you have a new video series, you know, those are different goals. So that's gonna really depend on what's coming up because if something is emergent, you're gonna to wanna to spend more time getting people registered for a webinar, getting them to subscribe to your podcast. So there's no short answer and I'm gonna leave it at it depends because it's something that, you know, it takes a little bit of diving into and everyone kind of needs to assess their own, their own business and really take a look at the reality of time in the sense that, okay, I'm going to, for a week, track how much time I spend writing. If I spend five hours a week writing, I really need to spend, you know, five, like 10 hours, 15 hours promoting that on the back end. It doesn't have right. to be all in the same week. We right. really want to make sure we're, we're giving the promotion part, the connecting with people. And promotion, for some of you, may sound like a bad word that doesn't feel comfortable. But it's about building relationships, right? You're putting out these little feelers onto your social media pages. Little, little bits of you out there that people can say, oh, I really like this person. I really like that they're short and snappy and they give me these little things. And oh, I, I like that, you know, they live out in the forest or wh whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. We want to just make sure we're, we're giving them li these, little, these little connection points so that when it comes time for the 
purchase of a book, the subscription to a, a podcast, you know, enrollment into a class or a coaching program, that they've had a lot of touch points from us that we're putting out there throughout the week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's so important. And I think one of the mistakes that I see authors make is that they spend all their time writing the book, they schedule their launch date, but then they launch with no publicity. And then they say, well, now how do I make my book a bestseller? And the right. truth is, if you are waiting until after your book is published to start marketing, you're waiting too long. You know, it, yeah, it's... Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and we all, when you write a book or do anything, when you launch anything you really want to first consider the, the date. So what is that launch date? And then work backwards and figure out how much of your content, how much promotion, how many bite-sized nuggets you wanna put out every day in the preparation for that. Because if you take a look at things like the Super Bowl, right? It's a big sporting event. Marketers spend billions of dollars to get their advertisement into that Super Bowl. And they don't do it the week before, right? They spend right. a whole year they know it's a big date. They know there's a lot riding on the line for that. So they backtrack that. They say, okay, this is the date. It has to be ready. And we need to do some, some trial runs or we need to do whatever it is to make sure enough people see that ad in, in the Super Bowl to make it worth the ad spend. Right. And not just see it, but also connect with it. Because it's one well, thing and, for and your, you know, thing. If right. your audience sees you, but they're not connecting with you, then that doesn't do anything. And even if, you know, even if they're not ready to buy from you yet, still building th those connection points is, is so crucial because that's that way when they are ready for what you have to offer, they're going to know, oh, okay, yes, I want to go to that person. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. yeah and, I, I, and one of our mentors, Renee, Renee Rebar, would say, you know, you're, you're putting out these warm cookies. Do they like chocolate chip cookies? Do they like macadamia nut cookies? Do they like raisin oatmeal? Right? So you're putting out different types of content for different people in the hopes that you're going to get the right people to, to come into your world because the more ensconced they become in your world, watching your videos, reading your blog posts, reading your social posts, the more likely it is they're going to on the back end hire you for a product or a service, read your book, listen to your podcast, attend your webinar, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I really do. I love Renee's warm cookies metaphor that, that you put them out <laughs> there and, you know, let people come. And, you know, and, and if you do put out warm cookies, people will come because people like cookies. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> You know, now that's kind of hard to do on the internet, but you can do that with your content, create again, those little pieces of connection that, that really help. And that's another thing that I think is important to share with your audience is your own story. I find that a lot of people, when they're yes. writing their books, they put in a lot of, oh, these are the facts. This is what I've learned, but they don't talk that much about themselves. And so can you tell us a little bit about, you know, now, obviously I think it's important for people to include their own story. Can you tell yes. us what, what you think about that? Yeah, and this goes back to the point about you have to show up in your unique brand, right? So in your brand, whether you're an author or whatever you do, it encompasses all the parts of you. So for instance, my brand is that, you know, I ran a performing arts studio for 17 years. And while there's not a, not a from the outside, there's not a direct path to what I'm doing now. It's all the same because it's all about creating and choreographing and then the performance is right it's all the same but if people don't know that the viewpoint that, that I'm sharing my lessons or my ahas they may not get it right because again it's, it's not a direct path you know performing right. art studio owner to you know somebody who loves tech and helps people with their content now they don't they don't see it right I have so many people ask me about that so I share my story a lot about that and it's it is really important and in the beginning it's going to feel a little bit weird to talk about yourself because right we most of us were raised not to boast not to brag not to talk about ourselves but when you have a business and you are going to go publish a book in particular you absolutely have to talk about yourself you want to talk mm -hmm. about this you know the place where the story came from was there an experience was did something happened in your life did you have a dream did you did the idea hit you in the shower you know talk about the creation process because again the more you share with your audience the whole you not just your book you but the, your whole you and, and share with them 
you know, these, these challenges that you have because other people want to know that people have challenges too. You know, we don't want to feel like we're the only ones that are struggling to write a book or do these things, right? We all face these challenges and the more we can share them, the more it humanizes us, the more people relate to that. So for instance, when I teach podcasting, Mm -hmm. I will recommend to my students to do it live on video. And again, it's whole, the whole thing of going live. However, if you just do it live and get it done, and there might be some trip over words, there might be some things you say backwards, or you just rush through things, it's okay. Because as a listener of podcasts, when people are human and they make mistakes, I like that. It endears them to me versus someone I can listen to and, you know, there's never any tripping over the words. There's never any flub ups and anything. To me, that feels a little bit like, mm, I don't know. I want to listen to somebody who has a life, who makes mm -hmm. mistakes, who is, mm -hmm. again, who is like me. And so the more we can share about ourselves and our challenges in any process, in, in all of our content, that's going to be better in the long run because it really just goes to build those relationships that you want before your book goes to print. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. So thank you so much for coming on and chatting with us. So is there, if someone wants to know, like, how do they pull out their, uh, you know, the, the little quotes from their book, uh, what did you call them? The quote cards? We call them quote cards around here, or yeah. some people would call them tweetables, you know, something really oh, short mm -hmm. and punchy you can tweet, right? Yeah. So we, we call them quote cards because we actually will put them on the eyes for sharing on social media, particularly Instagram. And they usually have a quote or an aha with a picture on it, right? So we turn it into not just another piece of text, but a piece of graphics as well. So mm -hmm. we call them quote cards around here. But yeah, so, so there's lots of different ways to do that. I actually have a whole series on my podcast that I just wrapped up, start talking about all the different ways that you can repurpose your content. Repurposing really just means to breathe new life into the content you already have so that you can give people content in a format that resonates with them, right? Mm -hmm. So the podcast, you can find that on my website at youngpratt.com slash podcast. So whether you're an author, whether you are a video creator, a blogger, or all three, you do to create, or, or, or all three, right? I have most of my students do all the things because we start with one piece of content and we turn it into those other pieces using some technology, using some automations and putting systems into their businesses so they can make these things happen on autopilot, which is super, super cool. Mm -hmm. That's so great. Yeah. So I will put the link to your podcast in, in the description as well so that people can connect with you. Thank you so much. Is there anything you'd like to add before we go? You know, I would just say if you're out there getting ready to create your book or publish your book, think about that, that end result. You know, what is it? Is there a number, a certain number of books you want to sell? Is there a certain number of people you want to come to a special class you're doing for, for book buyers? Think about that end result, work backwards, and make sure that your content is being dripped out along the way in really interesting ways so that more people can connect with you and get really excited about buying your book when you finally put it on a place like Amazon. Yeah, that, that's such great advice. Yeah, so thank you so much for joining. Uh, I do have a free Facebook group for anyone who is interested in writing their book. I will put that in, in the uh, comments as well so that you can join that. And I'm so happy that you could join us for this interview. Thank you again, Yong. And I hope everyone has a wonderful afternoon. So what did you think? I would love to hear your feedback about using someone else's content on today's episode of the podcast. Does it inspire you to want to do the same? Is there an interview that you've done recently or in the past that you could reach back out to that person and ask for permission to use their interview of you on your platform. Whether that's a podcast, whether that's a video show, whether that's on your blog, it makes for a really great way to connect and collaborate with somebody because we all want to build our tribe of awesome people. And how cool is it that you can introduce your tribe to someone else using this way of repurposing? And when you repurpose someone else's content, really intentionally and very strategically like I've done on this podcast, it can really open the doors to 
bigger collaborations. And I just think it's really cool to be able to bring somebody new into my tribe and introduce them to someone that they really need to know as well. Head over to today's show notes at youngpratt.com slash 293. Let me know what you thought. And I'm going to have some upcoming live events listed on the show notes. So definitely you'll want to come check those out to join me live. There are three opportunities this week alone for us to connect in real time. I look forward to connecting with you very soon. Cheers.